Now let us move ahead and see how we are going to find out the inverse of Laplace transform. As I have told you then when you are getting the transform here, when you are uh, moving from time domain to frequency domain, this process is reversible. You can come back from xs to xt. So this is nothing but the uh, but finding the inverse of the Laplace transform. So here you can see that you can get back the value of xt from xs by this particular formula. This formula says that x of t is equals to 1 upon 2 pi j integration of x of s. This is nothing but the Laplace transform that uh, you might have or you it might be given to you in the question. So this is x of s into e raised to the power s of t ds. Now the integration is in the frequency domain and here you, in, in the when you were finding the value of Lepra, Laplace transform then you were getting minus sign here and for this case to get the value back that is to find out the inverse Laplace here you are having positive sign and here the limits are from sigma minus j infinity to sigma plus j infinity. Alright, this is how you can find out the inverse Laplace transform. Though we are not going to use this method, there is one more met method by which you can very easily find out the inverse Laplace transform and that is by using partial fraction method. So by using this method, we can very easily find out the value of inverse Laplace transform. So let us look at that method by taking one example. If I take one question and this question says if the Laplace transform of any function or any signal is given by 1 upon s plus 1 into s plus 2 and here this Laplace transform exists for real part of s which is greater than minus of 1. For this particular question, the ROC is given and that is real part of S greater than minus 1. Then how we can get back the value of Laplace transform by using the partial fraction method? You, you just have to find out the inverse Laplace by using the partial fraction method. This is an easier method and you are going to use this in your exam. So here I can say that you can very easily make the partial fractions here. It can be splitted as A upon S plus 1 plus b upon s plus 2 all right and then after that you can write it like this this is what s plus 1 into s plus 2 a into s plus 2 plus b into s plus 1 so this goes with this all right or, or i can say that this is nothing but 1 upon s plus 1 into s plus 2 so if i say that this goes with this and you are left with if i compare these two terms i'm left with a into s plus 2 plus b into s plus 1 which is equals to 1 here. Now I have to find out the values of a and b. For that firstly I have to put s is equals to minus 2. So I am getting what? I am getting 0 here and here b into minus 1 which is equals to 1. So from here I can get the value of b as minus of 1. Similarly I can find out the value of a. Alright to find out the value of a I have to put s is equals to minus 1. So if I put s is equals to minus 1 then in that case I am getting what? I am getting minus 1 plus 2 this becomes 1 here and this becomes 0 here. So this is equals to 1. So I can say that the value of a comes out to be 1. So